decided. Decided for whom? All those who have accepted the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Unto them. Amen. He has set certain time in their life that will unreveal his great glory. Amen. He will reveal his great glory in these last days. God said time is now and it is actualized even as I am led by the Spirit of God. Say, I am led by the Spirit of God. Say the person next to you, being led by the Spirit of God is not, no rocket science. It's simple. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Say, praise Jesus. And I told you, <laughs> amen. Behold, now is the set time. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Amen. And Kairos is God's set time. Accepted means favorable time. Accepted means favor. Amen. And I gave an explanation that the most blessed time when salvation and free favors of God profusely abound. Just like blood profusely oozes out when we have a cut, so also the grace, the God's favor, profusely, amen, gushes out toward you. And that is what is called the word accepted. Amen. If you look at that verse, now is the accepted time. That word accepted is favor. Time is kairos. Hallelujah. Now is God's favor time. Now it is God's favor time. It is the dektos means God's favor. Hallelujah. And time is Kairos, God set time. Now is the time, not we are waiting for something. God has predestined for now. Now is your miracle, miracle time. Now is your time of blessing. We are not waiting for tomorrow to happen. We are right now receiving what he had predestined before time to be actualized as we allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say praise Jesus. I am led by the Spirit. In the gospel, Jesus said, follow me. Amen. In the epistle, it is not follow me. It is allow me. <laughs> we are not, he is in us. When he was with us, we follow him. Now he is in us. During the gospel, he was with us. He came as what? Emmanuel. God with us. But when the Holy Spirit came, he who was with us is now in us. Now he says, what to follow? We have to allow him. He's in us to lead us. Say, he's in me. All I need to do, allow him. Who? Who? Ah, Jesus. The unlimited version of Jesus is Holy Spirit. Amen. So that is what is called spirit-led life. Spirit-led life is the spirit who is inside you. You allow him to lead your life. Amen. Say praise Jesus. So the first thing as I told you last Sunday is how he leads us is first of all, he vanishes your past. He takes away your condemnation lifestyle. He gives you a righteous lifestyle. Hallelujah. Amen. He makes you to forget the past. He erases your past. He doesn't make you to dwell in the past. He wants you to forget your past. He says, behold, do not remember the things of the world. I do a new thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Now is the accepted time. That's what his word is saying. So when you cooperate with the Holy Spirit, I told you three things or three levels happen. That's given in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. What is it? That you may know what is, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will. So I said it's actually three levels of the Spirit. That's my personal study of the Spirit of God. When you allow Him, that is what Romans happened. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 happen in your life. When you allow Him, He begins to show you what is God's good will. Amen. 
then as you allow more him holy spirit to operate in your life he begins to show you what is the next level the accepted level amen then you further on you go on you just allow him to operate he will go into the perfect will hallelujah and we see those th these three happening in the life of jesus amen and i gave you an example from the life of lazarus you know when he came first he gave what the prophetical word and that's what most of we most of the believers are involved in giving the prophetical word to edify not to curse remember prophecy in the new testament is to edify never to curse amen it's not that if you do this god will bless you you say god blesses you i declare the blessings upon your life that is a prophetical word and that's what is level one and i told you that if you don't operate in level one then it is level zero or minus one <laughs> So level one is the one which you bring the edifying prophetical word to the believers, to the people in this world. You have hope. God loves you. Today is your day of salvation. All these things are, I gave you an example how you operate in level one. Level two goes on, he says, take away the stone. Amen. He never negates the responsibility of man. In cooperating with him. You know, for him who raised Lazarus from the dead, he could have himself taken away the stone. Right? Why? Because he never negates the human responsibility. Take away the stone. Hallelujah. It's a message by itself. Amen. Which I will not go into. That's not the, the purpose of today's teaching. So take away the stone. The moment you, you begin to operate in level two, there could be concerns being raised. He says, how? This man is dead for four days and his body is now stinking. So there could be eyebrows raised when you operate in level two. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So in level one and level two, which is my personal study, I began to tell you it's giving a prophetical way, giving a direction. That is level one and level two. You, he gave a prophetical way by saying prophetical word. By saying what? Your brother shall rise again. Then he gave a, a direction. Take away the stone. That is, that is what he said. Take away the stone. That is a, a, it's a direction. He gave a direction. What to do? Okay. But level three is something he doesn't rest on human. He himself goes on to do that. He just says, Lazarus, come forth. He doesn't give word. He doesn't give direction. He brings power. He himself brings power. And that's what the church is expected to do. Not only give a prophetical word, level one. Not only give a direction, oh, this is the way God is directing you, level two. But to bring the power. Bring the power on earth. To demonstrate that power. Amen. That's level three. So how does that happen? As you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Allow me. That's what the Lord says. Allow me to operate. Allow me to, uh, to direct you. And that brings us to this week. What is that allow? Amen. Say so praise Jesus. And I bring you this prophetical word again this very Sunday, the 30th of October, 2022. Taken from the book of Psalm. 32 verse 8 and 9. This is what he says. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will instruct you. When you allow me to operate, I will instruct you. Amen. I will teach you the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. And then he says, do not be like the horse, horse is known for speed, nor a mule is known for stubbornness. One is very fast, another is very stubborn. Do not be like a horse. Don't run ahead of what I'm saying. I have seen many times, Brother Suresh says to Brother Darlington, follow me, don't go ahead while playing. This is an example. It happens with all of us. It's not that it is only happening to Darlington. No, it all happens with us. Okay. 
I'm just giving an example. Just allow him. You know, when you are led by the Spirit at that point of time, you move with him or alongside with him. Amen. You don't go ahead of him. Okay, you flow in the rhythm of grace. Hallelujah. So when he says stop, stop. When he says walk, walk. Then don't assume that no. He said walk, next will be like that. You know, if you look at the life of David, it's a very good example. David said, shall I go? God said, go. Shall I overcome the Philistines? God said, yes, you will overcome the Philistines. Okay, he won the battle. And next battle came. He says, he, he asked, shall I go now? Again he's asking, shall I go now? He says, no, don't go. I, I hide in the uh, bushes, put an ambush. When you see the, the, uh, the, uh, the moving of the tops of the mulberry tree, then move. So there is no hard and fast rules when the Spirit of God guides you, directs you. He could direct you this way today. Tomorrow he may change. Okay, so that's why it is so important for us when he says, I will instruct you. And teach you and guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse. Don't go ahead of time. Nor be stubborn like a mule which has no understanding. Which must be harnessed with bit and bridle. Else they will not come near you. So how is a horse led? Use the bit, bit and bridle. Whip them. <laughs> we are not whipping, being whipped Christian. So let's say the person next to you. I am not a being whipped Christian. <laughs> I am led Christian. <laughs> I don't need a whipping. Say, I don't need a whipping. Amen. Amen. I am led by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Say, only the horse and the mule needs whipping. Amen. Horse is, what does it do? They do what do, what, how do, uh, how does the rider uh, control the horse? Uh, he just pulls it. Because the speed is so fast. How does he, how does the rider uh, uh, rule the donkey or the mule. Whip him because he's not moving. <laughs> you understand? So God says, don't be like that. I want to lead you. I want to instruct you. Don't go by your understanding. Allow me to operate. Allow me. Help me to help you. Amen. Amen. Allow my spirit to guide you. And it is not a rocket science. It's not that difficult. Hallelujah. Say praise Jesus. So, no, which has no understanding. No understanding means does not understand righteousness. I was talking in the Bible study. No, which has no understanding means what? Lack of understanding on righteousness. Right? How do you know that, brother? You may ask, and if you read Psalm 119 verse uh, 25 and 27, it says, help me to understand your way. The psalmist says, my soul is clinging on to the dust. Revive me, Lord. Help me to know your way. Help me to understand your way. The way is the right way. Understanding is right way. So it is the understanding means understanding his righteousness. Amen. So the horse kind of Christianity lacks understanding. The mule kind of Christianity lacks understanding. What they lack? Understanding of righteousness. Okay. But the believer who understands what is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus are led by the Spirit. And you find that thing in Proverbs chapter 20 verse 5. Amen. Amen. There he says, a man of understanding draws the water. Amen. The counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. The man of understanding draws it out. So, drawing from the spirit inside you. Hallelujah. Say praise Jesus. So, here you are and here am I. How to be led by the spirit. Look at the verse there. So, uh, Proverbs 20 verse 5. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. Deep, call it to deep. In, uh, in Psalm 42 says, deep water is the Holy Ghost. The counsel of God is where? Not out in the sky. Not in the misty cloud. Where is the deep water? 
in my spirit say in my spirit amen in my spirit is the holy spirit is like a deep water and a counsel is there and the man of understanding the man who understands righteousness draws from where from his own spirit who is in him where holy spirit dwells we are in the age where christ in us we are gone past the age of christ with us christ with us is the gospel christ in us is epistle christ with us is follow me christ in us is allow me you are because the holy spirit is inside you holy spirit is not outside you holy spirit is inside you say the person next to you holy spirit is inside of me christ in me means holy spirit in me amen say praise jesus say where is christ he is in me if you have doubts then i'll give you an altar call you will be saved then the christ will become inside you hallelujah <laughs> say praise jesus christ is inside of you holy spirit is inside of you you need to just allow yes lord holy spirit you are inside me i don't feel you i don't see you but you are in me i'm not led by what i see i'm led by what i believe Amen. Amen. I believe you are in me. I believe you dwell in my heart. Say the person next to you. I believe Holy Spirit dwells in me. I need not feel him. I need not see him. Amen. Because some people feel Holy Spirit only when they come in the church gathering. The rest of the seven days or the six days they don't see or feel him. No, whether you feel it or not, whether you see it or not, where is Holy Spirit? in me say the person next to you in me he dwells in me whether i see whether i feel he is in me that is the truth for every believer hallelujah for everyone who has accepted jesus as the lord and savior amen say praise jesus amen so here we are i will instruct you and teach you the way you should go and i will guide you with my eye now let me tell you something interesting you know in the old testament you had god the father god the son and god the holy spirit okay god the son was manifested as the eth the aleph tav which we'll come back a little later we have been teaching on that in in days past but whenever the holy spirit comes there are certain things that he has kept in the old testament when you see that he says this is what the holy spirit just the way he says this is it this is jesus so also concerning the holy spirit concerning the father there are certain god's key words in the old testament that say okay this is father okay this is holy spirit okay this is jesus it's hidden there okay so whenever whenever the old testament says i will teach you i will instruct you i will guide you it is the holy spirit whenever the word comes in the old testament i will in first person i will instruct you i will teach you i will guide you with my eye who is speaking holy spirit is speaking it is jehovah the holy spirit amen holy spirit is speaking there that is the ministry of the holy spirit as defined by jesus when jesus introduced the holy spirit what did he say first thing in john's gospel chapter 14 verse 26 when the helper has come he shall teach you all things that was what jesus introduced the holy spirit when he introduced the holy spirit when the, but the helper the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name he will teach you all things he will teach you all thing this is the introduction of the holy spirit by jesus and that is what says in the old testament so when the old testament psalm uh, 32 was 8 says i will instruct you and teach you who is that person i holy spirit hey man say the person next to you every time it is to do with teaching on guidance it is always the holy spirit Amen. I will instruct you and teach you. I will guide you with my eye. 
you will find that thing in in john's gospel chapter 16 verse 12 and 13 if we can have it on the screen uh, john's gospel chapter 16 verse 12 and 13 there again the lord jesus talks about the holy spirit what does he say look i still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now who says this Jesus, but when he, who is that he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all the truth. He will guide you. He will not speak on his own authority. Whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He is the, he is the spirit of prophecy. He is the spirit of guidance. He is the spirit of teaching. Spirit of understanding. So when the Teaching comes, who is speaking? Holy Spirit teaching. When he says, I will guide you. So now if you come back to uh, Psalm 32 verse 8 once again, you will find that I will instruct you and teach you. This is what Jesus said in John's gospel 14, 26. Then where in the way you should go, then I will guide you. That's exactly Jesus said. When he comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Are you there? What is said in Psalm 32 verse 8 is what is being reflected by Jesus or mentioned by Jesus when he is introducing the Holy Spirit. That is the first time he is talking on the Holy Spirit. That when he comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will teach you all things. He will instruct you the way you should go. There are many things I myself want to teach you, but you will not be able to bear. Jesus himself says, I have so much to tell you, but you will not understand. Who will make you to understand? Holy Spirit. Who is able to guide you? Holy Spirit. Who is able to teach you? Holy Spirit. And where is this Holy Spirit? Say the person next to you. So many times he said, he's in me. <laughs> he's in me. He's not outside of me. He's inside of me. And that's why he says, allow me, hallelujah, say praise Jesus. Now, what is he when he says, I want to teach you? What he wants to teach us? What does he want us to teach us? And that's the prophetical word this morning. There are so many things to teach, but what is it that he wants to teach? This hour. What is it that he wants to teach this season? That is important. And that's the prophetical word. That is coming to you this morning. Amen. What does he want to teach the church? What does he want to instruct the church? What does he want to guide the church? That's the word this morning. Look at the voice that changes the moment I say this. What does he want to teach? What does he want to guide? What does he want to instruct? Of what? That's given in Isaiah 48 verse 17. Let's see that. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit. Teaches you to profit, lead you by the way you should go. Who is the one? Who is the one here? I am the Lord, your God. Holy Spirit. Who is the one who teaches? I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. Who is the one who teaches? Holy Spirit. So when the word comes, this is how you will, you will interpret the Old Testament. When the moment is, I am the Lord, your God, Jehovah. Who is the Jehovah of the three persons here? Holy Ghost. Because he's talking about teaching. He's talking about the way, guidance, where you should go, how you should go. What is he this morning talking of? What is he wants to teach? What does the Holy Spirit want to teach us this morning? How you should profit. How you should excel in business. How you should excel in your profession. How you should excel in your academics. How to make your investment multiply. How to make money. How to be prosperous. How to extend the power of God through you. How to make your life prosperous. How to make your life profitable. I teach you to profit. 
And that's the prophetical word this morning to the church of GRGC, those who are watching us online. I have come here to teach you to profit. Church, wake up. I'm going to give you three important keys how to be profitable in your business, in your finances, in your profession, in your academics, as a teacher, as a student, as a one who is a, a prophet or a teacher or anybody, anybody you are. Today, God's want, God wants to teach you to profit. <whistles> Hallelujah. Say praise Jesus. God wants to do what? To teach you to? Say the person next to you. I am being taught by the Holy Spirit to profit in my life. What did I say? Because your focus was on my wife, not on me. What did I tell you right now? Ah, I am here. Say, I am here. To be taught by Suloch Raja, ah, by Shantima, by Ki, that sound. Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think, Brother Samuel, if you sit down, it'll all arrest. You need to listen to the word. Say, praise Jesus. I am here to teach you. Who says? Holy Spirit. Teach you to do what? To have loss in your life? Profit. To have profit, success in your life. To see success. What is one of our proclamations? This confession that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus shall not depart from my mouth, but I shall meditate, I shall confess day in and day out. Then God will put his laws. Ah. Ah. Yes. Ah. Ah. Success. Amen. Those who are still stammering, I have a special session with you in Jesus' name. <laughs> to just tell you, you're God's beloved. Amen. Say praise Jesus. You have success in your life because he wants to teach you to profit. He wants to teach you to profit, to be successful in life, to be prosperous, to be prosperous how to run an institution, to how to run a school, how to run a university, how to run a business, how to conduct your department, how to be successful in academics. How to flourish in your subjects. How to, how to be an uh, efficient person, smart person. The Holy Spirit says, this is that season. Now is the time. I'm coming down to teach you this one aspect in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I had this message. But as it was coming to about 5 or 6 o'clock last evening, this is what the Lord said. I have come to teach you to profit. It's then my eyes open. Oh, it is not something I teach them. What you want to teach them is what I should preach to them. And he wants you to profit. He wants you to be successful. Successful as a housewife. Successful as a husband. House, successful to be a student. Or as an ogre, as an investor. Hallelujah. He will teach you to profit. And that's his promise. And the word there, prophet in Isaiah 48 verse 17, there is Yaval. Say Yaval. You know about Laval, right? Uh, similarly, there's a word called Yaval. That is the word prophet in the Hebrew. Y-A-A-L. But pronounced as what? Yaval. It's actually the word is Y double A L, prophet. But the way you phonetically pronounce is Yaval. Say Yaval. 
You remember lava, right? Only change the la as ya. So you get the word prophet. So my portion is yawal. Say, my portion is la yawal. <laughs> ah, to profit, to succeed, to confer, gain profit. Hallelujah, benefit. Amen. Say, praise Jesus. Amen. And if you look at the next verse, it's beautiful. Verse 40, uh, 18th verse of Pro, uh, Isaiah 48 says, Oh, that you have eaten, you had eaten my commandments. That means what? Had you just listened to my, my teaching, my counsel, how to profit you, your peace would have been like a river and your righteous like the waves of the sea. Hallelujah. I would have made your life so easy, so peaceful, stress-free. I would have taught you how to be successful, yet be stress-free. You are now trying to work out your own ways of succeeding in life. Had you only listened to my counsel, had you only been directed by my spirit, says the Lord, I would have taught how to be peaceful at all times. Amen. Amen. And how to be having the righteousness mindset. You see, look at the verse there once again. It's beautiful. That your peace would have been like a river. When he uses the word peace, he uses the word river. But when he uses the word righteousness, he uses the word sea. Waves of sea. Have you, have you seen the waves in the sea? On, uh, it comes wave one. Again, another wave. Another wave. Another wave. That means what? Progressive revelation of righteousness. One wave comes, another wave comes, another wave comes, another wave comes. You keep on increasing in the revelation of the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's a wave after wave after wave after wave. It's a continuous revelation on the righteousness of God that takes you from strength to strength, glory to glory, from pillar to pillar. You are moving ahead in the power of God. Say, praise Jesus, only listen to me and I will make your life so easy, stress-free. I will make your life so easy. Say, praise Jesus. So then there are three important keys. First key, how to be successful in life, how to be prosperous in life, how to make your life profitable. The first is the understanding of the righteousness is the first key to profit. Understanding the righteousness is the first key to profit. Say praise Jesus. You know, we read the verse what? In Psalm 32 verse 8 and 9. What does it say? I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. And do not be like a mule or the horse. But if you begin the psalm, in Psalm 32 verse 1 and 2, it says, Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven. Whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom God or the Lord does not impute iniquity. And in his spirit there is no deceit. Now this is the verse that is picked by Paul the Apostle. And he quotes it in Romans chapter 4. He takes these words and he expounds the meaning of these words in Romans 4. Okay, he quotes these verses. What verses? Psalm 32, verse 1 and 2. He picks up that and uses it in his writing in the epistle according to Roma or given out to Romans in chapter 4, verse 5 and verse 6. Let's see that. 4, verse 5 and 6. Is, uh, there's people who have gone ahead. You see, they have gone ahead of me. That's what I said. They are going ahead of me. So, <laughs> Romans chapter 5, verse 4, verse 5. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David, now Psalm 32, just as David, he's quoting, David is the author of Psalm 32. He says, just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. And then he quotes Psalm 32, verse 1 and 2, in verse 7 and verse 8. 
Now you can show. Good. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven. Those sins are covered. Verse 8 in Romans. Blessed is a man to whom Lord does not impute sin. He is now quoting Psalm 32 verse 1 and 2. And he says, what does it infer? Again, in Romans chapter 4 verse 5, it says that, but to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies who? Not the godly. Who justifies not the, un, not the godly. Read it. Put your specs properly and see just like I am using my specs to see. What does the word say there? Who justifies the ungodly. Who is ungodly? The, all those who are in this world who have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior are ungodly. He justifies them. He makes them righteous. He declares them righteous. Who justifies the ungodly. Who justifies the ungodly. And when they receive it, the faith, that is treated as righteousness. Who justifies the ungodly. Because here we are in the business of justifying the godly. Justifying the righteous. But God is in the business of justifying the ungodly. That is grace all about. And those who are watching us on YouTube and Facebook or whatever media, social media. Here God is justifying you. God has declared you justified. God has declared you righteous on account of Jesus. His blood has been shed and God sees you righteous. World, God sees you righteous. Nigeria, God sees you righteous. India, God sees you righteous. United Kingdom, God sees you righteous. Whoever you are watching us on, on YouTube, God sees you righteous. No matter you, whatever things you have done, God sees you righteous on account of Jesus who had paid the price because of that. Today, God sees you righteous. You are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. Say praise Jesus. That is the word for you. The first key to profit in your life is to have an understanding of his kind of righteousness. He justifies the ungodly. That is why we are not here to condemn anybody. Because God has forgiven all. Whether those who are in the church, outside the church, in the street, whether they come to the church or not, God has declared them righteous. And we are not in the business to condemn anybody because he himself does not condemn. Amen. That is the word of righteousness. That is the understanding of righteousness. We are not in the business of seeing whether I am better than him. No, we are in the business of whether I'm moving from level one to level two to level three. What is level one? Giving a prophetical, hopeful word. What is level two? Giving them a direction. What is level three? Bringing the solution yourself, whether he believes or not. Are you there? Don't say, have faith, brother. Because he's not having faith, only God depends on your faith. Have faith, brother. You must believe. He's not able to believe. You are supposed to bring that faith. I'm supposed to bring that faith. The church is supposed to bring that faith to the world. Amen. My teaching may be different. That's how it is. Amen. We are into that business. We are here to make things happen for them. That is our business. Not whether I am like a Pharisee, the fair I see. Why we are called Pharisee? Because they see themselves very fair. Ah. Fair I see. What is Pharisee? I see myself fair. I see others as junk. Unfair. <laughs> fair I see. I am not in that business. Church is not in that business. Church is in the business of upgrading themselves as the Holy Spirit teaches them from level 1 to level 2, level 2 to level 3. And church is here by the Holy Spirit in them, Holy Spirit in each member of the church to direct him, direct her. Say praise Jesus. So understanding of the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus is the first key how to make your life prosperous. 
It's the first key to understand his righteousness. His righteousness is apart from your good works. His righteousness is apart from your bad works. Hallelujah. Good works, fair I see. Bad works, tax collector. Amen. Are you there? Two people went to pray. Fair I see and tax collector. See how better I am. Good works. Yes, right. We don't deny you tithe. We don't deny that you have been keeping yourself fasting oftentimes. But that is not that makes you righteous. What makes you righteous is the shed blood of Jesus. Jesus has made you righteous by his blood. It is his blood that has made you Pharisee. You, say, you can say, fair I see because of Jesus. Good. Fantastic. Or you can also say, I'm tax collector, redeemed tax collector by the blood. Redeemed tax collector. You are now a redeemed believer. Redeemed tax collector. Or a fair I see as per the blood, uh, blood of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> say, praise Jesus. That's the first key of understanding on righteousness. Righteousness is not dependent on what you do. Righteousness is dependent on what he did. At the Calvary's cross. Jesus paid the price for you. You are washed by his blood. You are declared righteous. God doesn't see you. God sees Jesus. You in Jesus. When he sees you, he sees Jesus. He sees his good works at the Calvary. He sees his obedience on your, on your stead. In your place. He obeyed the Father. Father sees Jesus in you. You in Jesus. When he sees you, he doesn't see you. He sees Jesus. Amen. Say praise Jesus. And that's why Father answers our prayer. Okay. You don't tithe so that you can have favor. Because you had favor, you tithe. Are you there? Don't close your bubbles of mercy after being blessed. You're going to from grade one to grade level zero. <laughs> but wait till he blesses you. Once he blesses you, reach out. Amen. Tithe is the output of God's grace. Say tithe is the output of God's grace upon my life. Hallelujah. We are not here to take your tithe. We are here to give grace. We want to impart grace in your life. Tithe is automatic. Tithe should result out of that grace. So is also fasting. So is also every good work. It's because of the grace that comes upon your life. Say, praise Jesus. Say the person next to you that I'm listening. Amen. Don't say, I heard. Say, I'm listening. There's a lot of difference between I heard, I heard you. And say, I'm listening. Say, I'm listening. When you say, I, I, I heard you means, sh sh shut up, I understand. You're putting it in a very polite way. I heard you. Say, I'm, I'm not saying I heard you. Say, I'm listening. Ah, good. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So that's number one. The second key and the third key are very glorious. And I will be very fast to finish that. Amen. It's taken from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Amen. Praise Jesus. There you are. Say the person, you're beautiful. Amen. There is a, a success key unlocked this morning, how to become profitable. How to succeed in your business. How to succeed in your investment. Spirit of God says you will see things crack down from now on. You are going to see the church multiply. You are going to see church prosperous. Amen. I'm going to unlock the secret to them. Amen. You will become prosperous. You will have much more than you want. Say, supply will be greater than demand. Why the dollar rate is going high? Because the demand is higher than the supply. People are demanding dollar more. That's why the dollar rate is going high. But if the supply is more, what will happen? The dollar rate will come down. 
right and we are here in the business of telling the supply is greater than the demand amen, amen. that means what that means dollar rate will come down amen my god hallelujah amen some people they don't want because they're holding dollars in their hand <laughs> But I am saying that dollar rate will come down because the supply is going to be great. We will have direct investments into this land. People will pour out in automatically. Healthcare system is going to go through revolution. Say, praise Jesus. You know how much money is spent on healthcare from the government of Nigeria? The latest uh, um, census, $1.2 billion dollar spent every year for medical tourism 1.2 billion dollar which is 11 percent of the total outflow of dollar in the medical field the amount of money they spend towards medicine medical equipment medicine anything to do with medical thing 12, 11% of the total of that thing goes on tourism. People move out of this country to find solution to their problem. They travel to India, they travel to US, they travel to UK, they want their blood transfusion to be done. They go to the UK from the top person to the bottom. Everybody wants to go out of the country. So there is a money that is demanded, dollar. So what happens? Dollar rate goes up here because demand is more. When you do more of imports, demand is more. When there is more of exports, demand is less. So God is transforming this economy. God is changing Nigeria in the field of medical science, in the field of production, manufacturing, in the field of agriculture, in the field of crude oil. So much of crude oil is here. We send it out, export it. To make it refined and bring it back. Can you imagine? We have crude oil in this country. We, ex <laughs> we, send the ex uh, uh, we send the crude oil out of the country to get it refined and then we buy back. So also chocolates. Cocoa is here. We send out. They become like Swiss chocolate. Come back to this country. You see how economy is getting depleted? How the, uh, how the dollar is, uh, value is going up in this country? Because we have the infrastructure. We are not utilizing the infrastructure. We are not utilizing the resources in this land. The land is plenty of resources. Coordination, integration is the issue of this country. We have pockets, people. We have different major tribes, but they don't interact. And because of that, there is no integration and the economy is not growing. Each one is thinking in their own way, in their own profit. If you go to the Igbo line, it's different. You go to the Yoruba line, it's different. You go to the Hausa line, it's different. But there is no integration. And by pocket, by pocket, they are very successful. If they only can come and join together, this nation will boom. This is the first thing God told me in 2013 when I stepped again into this land. The problem of this nation is integration. This nation needs integration. Integration of thought, integration of idea, leaving behind, uh, be, behind their linguistic uh, differences and tribal differences. They come for a common cause. And the Holy Ghost is in the business of doing it. How does he do it? Through the church. Through the church. And how does he carry out? Righteousness. Keep saying that. You don't know what you're saying. But it has so much of power. You're releasing power. Amen. Say praise Jesus. Hallelujah. We're keeping a close watch what is happening into this nation. I keep asking different, different people, whom do you feel that the next president should be? Some are very positive, some are very negative. I cannot share those views. But I know one thing. God is bringing the man after his own heart. He's bringing the man after his own heart. You Nigerians, we Nigerians say, praise Jesus. This nation has great hope. 
this will be the pinnacle of the nations. Hallelujah. Our nation is going to rise up big time. Say praise Jesus. Don't give up the hope because I have seen some people whenever I talk about next election, they just don't even bother. You know why? Because they are being so much cheated. So many false promises have been made and they feel very dejected and they feel very betrayed. Only the youth are rising here in this nation. Amen. Amen. Say thank God for the youth. They will be directed by the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say praise Jesus. And that is the key of the first key to succeed in life, to profit in your life. Understanding his righteousness because righteousness exalts the nation. Proverbs 14.34 says righteousness exalts the nation. That's why you say your president is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's why you say your governors are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. As Alison says, your magistrate are righteousness to Israel. So shall we say to this nation, the governors of this land are righteous. They are the righteous. It doesn't matter how they, you see it or not. You say by faith. Because righteousness of God is by faith. You don't see but you speak. You don't feel, but you speak. That is righteousness of God by faith. That is what Paul taught. Whether you see or don't see, speak. You keep speaking. And especially when you move out of this house, you get into your car, you go back home. Don't go back to the old method. Speak good words. Say, praise Jesus. Once again, don't talk, or talk about how you came into the church. Talk good things. God took good things about the country. Good things about your children. Say they are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, here we are. In Deuteronomy 8.18. I'm going into the second key word in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy. And you shall remember. Say remember. 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 Then what do you see there? Ah, you see there. Al of Taft. You shall remember the Alpha and the Omega, Aleph Taf, the Lord your God. Who is this Lord? Jehovah, Aleph Taf, the Jehovah, Jesus, the Jehovah. And you shall remember Jesus, your Jehovah, for it is Jesus, Jehovah, who gives you power to get wealth. Jesus, your Jehovah, Aleph Taf. He is the one who gives. Holy Spirit, the Jehovah, teaches. Jesus, Jehovah, gives. Amen. Amen. Say the person next to you, I'm learning. Say the person, whether I'm learning or not, I'm here for good. <laughs> Amen. Jesus the Jehovah gives, imparts power. Say imparts power. To what? For what? Get wealth. Say the person that you wealth, Oga. Ah, wealth. Are you happy today? Good. I know they will come and approach me at the service. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Say he's here to give. Say he's here to give. Who? Jesus the Jehovah, the Al of Taf, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is in the Old Testament hidden. Because till today they don't know what you see as a sign. When you read it in, the, uh, in the, any version of the Bible, you will not find Al of Taf. Only in Hebrew you will find that word there. And which is in described, undefined. Even the Hebrews, you go to any Jew, ask them, what is this Aleph Taf? You see a sign there, or two words there. And it is written, read from right to left. The first letter on the right side is Aleph. The second letter is Taf. The first letter of the alphabet of the Hebrew, there are 22 alphabets. The first letter is Aleph. And the last letter, 22nd letter is called Taf. That means what? Alpha and Omega, the first and the Last, the beginning and the, who is he? Jesus. Are you there? It is hidden in the Hebrew. Hebrew guys cannot, I can challenge. If he can, he can interpret, then he is a Jewish, Messianic Jew. 
He is born again Jew. Till today Jews do not know what is his Aleph Tav. But the church has been grazed. Amen. He is the one who gives power. Say power. To do what? To get wealth. Amen. And you know what is the word there? Wealth here? The word wealth. Wealth in that word. If you see that word wealth, to get wealth. What is the word in the Septuagint? Septuagint is the Greek version of the Hebrew. Septuagint. Say Septuagint. Say Septuagint. Not September. Septuagint. Say Septuagint. Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament. In you, when you begin to read the Greek word, the word that is used wealth there is called dunamis. The word wealth there is called dunamis. Hallelujah. Say person next to you. Now this brings us to the key, the second key. Understanding the, the indwelling Holy Spirit is the second key to profit. The first key is righteousness. The second key is the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, which is in us, is the second key. Why that? You read Acts 1 verse 8. Let's read Acts 1, 1 verse 8. He says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Media, you need to change that. Acts 1 verse 8. Good. Say, what does it say? You shall receive? What is the word that power? Dunamis. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you will receive that dunamis. That wealth which is written in Deuteronomy 8.18, that wealth you receive when the Holy Ghost comes upon your life. You shall receive dunamis. That's the word used there. He gives you power to get dunamis. Holy Ghost comes with that dunamis. That is a secret of success. You see, the problem is we have it, but we do not know the understanding of it. That is our problem. If you only knew, as he said to the Samaritan woman, the gift of God and who is speaking to you, you would have asked. The problem was she didn't understand. And say the person next to you, today I'm here to understand. Amen. Say praise Jesus. You shall receive dunamis, the wealth which is defined in Deuteronomy 8.18. I receive dunamis when I receive what? Holy Ghost. Amen. Now this is the second experience. This is different from born again experience. Born again experience, he breathed the Holy Spirit. And they begin to know that the righteousness of God is as a free gift. Holy Ghost anointing is a second level. That's what he's talking here. Do not miss comes when you receive the Holy Spirit anointing and begin to speak in tongues. That's where the dunamis begins to operate in your life. Say praise Jesus. So then, dunamis is the dynamic ability to cause changes. What is dunamis? Ability. Dunamis is the dynamic ability. Say dynamic ability. That word dunamis in the Greek is taken from there into English as dynamite. The word dynamite is from word dunamis. An explosion. I mean, an ability. Say ability. Dynamic ability to cause changes. Say changes. Amen. So where does the dynamic dynamite come? In me. That is able to bring changes in your life. Hallelujah. Say praise Jesus. One interesting thing about the dunamis is it's an inherent ability or power. You are not born with that, but you are born again with that. It is not something you develop. It's given to you. You're born again with that when the Holy Ghost comes. It's there. Say the person next to you. When I receive the Holy Spirit and I begin to speak in tongues 
as, a, as an evidence of receiving the Holy Spirit, I have received dunamis. It's there. And he, all God is set to show forth. And he said very clearly, this is that season. Now is the time. Now I'm going to make you to be profitable. Hallelujah. Say praise Jesus. Dunamis is a super ability to excel in business. Dunamis is a super ability to excel in profession. Dunamis is a super ability to excel in academics. Dunamis is a super ability to excel in sports. Whatever you want to excel, dunamis is that word. This, that is what is going to make you to excel. Say praise Jesus. So then, speaking in tongues, may I have the media now. Speaking in tongues is that force that triggers that dynamic or dynamic ability in you to cause changes within you in order to excel. The next one. Either you have not done it or perhaps, I want, here you are. I have to keep on reminding the media, do this, do this. Because they are not led by the spirit. They need whipping. So what do we say? We will not say them they are horse. What do you say in that thing? They are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You don't call them horse. You don't call them mule. What do you call them? They are the righteousness of God. Because it is a righteousness that makes them sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say praise Jesus. When you see somebody below standard, don't say he's below standard. What do you say? He's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because you open the door for the spirit to move. Say praise Jesus. Amen. So speaking in tongues is that force. What force? I will give you power to get wealth. That word power in Deuteronomy 8.18. That word power is actually called iskus. <laughs> I, I, I should not go into depth of it. Remember, let's go to Deuteronomy. Look at that. Look at that. He will give you power, iskus, to get dunamis. Power is a force that triggers off the dunamis inside you to come out. Amen. Otherwise, I think this is going to go into sleep. Somebody has to operate this. Auto sleep. See, that's the power that is going to trigger off the wealth, the dunamis inside you. Say, praise Jesus. So that power is there in every believer. And when you are speaking in tongues, say, speaking in tongues, that propels, becomes that force to make the dunamis work. Say praise Jesus. Can we have a speaking in tongues is that power, that force that triggers that dy dynamic ability called dunamis in you to cause changes within you in order to excel. Amen. When he says he will give you power to get wealth means he will give you that ability, that power, the force in the New Testament is speaking in tongues. Malka baraha. You know what you do when you speak in tongues? You know what you do? You are making the inherent, the dunamis inside you to just get out, causing you to excel. Speaking in tongues triggers releases or you say it tempts it's a triggering it triggers off what is in you dunamis dunamis is that extraordinary talent extraordinary ability that excels the world it's beyond the world say praise jesus Another word for power is demonstrated when Elijah ran ahead of Ahab and the chariot. That is that that is iskus or the power that the iskus power that generated the dynamis inside him to go ahead of the world. 
to barhaka shakal ho ye raha santa ka what is happening is you're releasing that dynamics inside you to come out that will make you a world beater that will make you successful in business that will make you successful in profession that will make you successful in your academics you will be ahead of people say praise jesus the so second key is understanding of what the indwelling holy spirit inside you who has given you dynamis and when you yield to that allow him he begins to make you to speak in tongues that triggers of the dynamis inside you to come out that causes you to succeed he will give you ideas what you should do where you should go whom you should meet inside you he will guide you don't ever think that no sitting that automatic things will happen you need to do your part he said take away the stone does he not know how to take away the stone he knew how to take away the stone and after he raised lazarus from the dead what did he say take away the clothes take the grave put on grace Amen. Say praise Jesus. Because once you take the grave he puts grace. Our job is to take the grave. Don't make the person to feel that he's thinking. Four days he's thinking in the tomb. When he says take away the stone, Lord, he's thinking. I know he's thinking. Should I leave him like that? No, Lord. Take away the stone. Bakam take away that's our role you cooperate allow the spirit to speak in tongues give voice to the tongue which is coming from inside of you speak in tongues say praise jesus say the person next to you i'm learning i'm not saying i have heard i'm listening say praise jesus now comes the third key with it i'm done the third key is understanding the covenant of grace understanding what the covenant of grace understanding first what the righteousness key one key two understanding indwelling holy spirit in me and third is understanding the covenant of grace let's go back to deuteronomy 8:18 and you shall remember that it is alaf taf your god lord your god for it is alaf taf the alpha and the omega whose name is jesus who gives you power to get to nomis who gives you the excuse to get the power that to nomis who has given us the tongue he speaks in tongue that he may establish his covenant covenant of grace now you will begin to understand what is grace covenant it's a big topic so i will not go into it simple word grace but there is a covenant listen in simple words shall i tell you what is covenant the covenant mentioned here in the old testament that is covenant based on man's obedience if man obeys god does that that is covenant in the new testament the covenant of grace is again based on obedience not on my obedience on jesus's obedience in the old testament god had to depend on the obedience of people so that he could give power to get wealth and he said when i remember my covenant with them it is your forefathers abraham isaac and jacob they obeyed me therefore i'm coming with this grace upon your life in the new testament he says because my son who is called jesus has come and paid the price i am now establishing the covenant of grace with you because he obeyed in your place he obeyed jesus obeyed Jesus obeyed say praise Jesus he obeyed he obeyed by one man's obedience we are made righteous 
The covenant of grace is not based on your merit. Covenant of grace is based on his merit. It is he who begged. Grace came. Understanding that covenant. Say praise Jesus. He said one thing. The moment I finished writing this, he said, now I do it. Now I will perform. You got it. He said, you just got it. Understanding his righteousness, not my good works, not my obedience. Understanding the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let me conclude. First of all, understanding media. Understanding the righteousness is the first key. Means sin consciousness is replaced by righteousness consciousness. Say, sin consciousness is replaced by righteousness consciousness. If you still remember and you regret of the actions that you did in the past, you have not understood righteousness. If you still think, oh my God, had it been that I never did that. Had I been, I never met that man. Had I been, I never that met that woman. If you're thinking like that, that means you're not understood righteousness. Because you're still having the sin consciousness. And that's why you're not prospering. Understanding the righteousness is the sin consciousness is replaced by righteousness consciousness. You're all the time thinking you're righteous because of the shed blood. All the time you remind, if he reminds you the past, you will say, I am a new creation. All things have passed away. I am a brand new man. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You have to keep on reminding yourself that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're replacing all those sinful thoughts of the past with gracious righteousness thought of Jesus. Hallelujah. That is the first key. Righteousness consciousness. Second key, let's see. Understanding the indwelling Holy Spirit is the second key to profit. Means what? Practicing law is replaced by practicing the Holy Ghost. God gave the law to follow the law. In the New Testament, God has given the Holy Ghost to follow. Law is replaced by the Holy Ghost. You are not here to obey God's law. You are here to obey God's Holy Ghost. Because he is the spirit of truth. That is what is understanding the indwelling Holy Spirit. Because in the Old Testament, God gave the law to obey. In the New Testament, God gave the Holy Spirit to obey. To allow him to operate. Please understand. Old Testament law was given that you may follow the law, keep the law. In the New Testament, God has given not the law. God has given the Holy Ghost that you may just allow him to speak and obey him. You are, you are, you are led by the, the inside prompting. Inside you will say, go, switch off the phone. Switch off the uh, phone. Switch off the uh, uh, gas. He says, ah. Feeling very tired. Don't do that. When he's giving the prompting, obey immediately. Say praise Jesus. God has given the Holy Ghost to be led. God gave the Old Testament law that they were led. To the church, he has given the Holy Ghost, not the law. Because law teaches you do not commit adultery. Holy Ghost teaches you how to love your wife with all your heart. Because law doesn't teach you how to love your wife. Law will teach you don't commit adultery. But when the Holy Ghost comes, he will teach you how to love your wife. When you love your wife with all your heart, where is the question about adultery? Law is content. Holy Ghost is intent. Law works on the outside. Holy Ghost works in the inside. Amen. That is what is understanding indwelling Holy Ghost. 
practicing law is replaced by practicing the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Finally, with that I end. Understanding the covenant of grace is the third key to profit. Self-effort is replaced by grace efforts. When it is grace efforts, it is effortless. Amen. When it is grace effort, it is effortless. It just moves in that rhythm of grace. Because you have learned for him to lead you. Allow me, says the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, follow me. But the Holy Spirit inside you says, allow me. All you need to do is just allow him. Allow his inside voice to direct you. Because Holy Spirit is dwelling inside you. Amen. You don't need a prophet to teach you the way. He is the prophet. Dwelling inside of you. He will give you the direction what to do. Who to marry. When to do. What to study. What to do for the day. Every day he will direct you. And when the temptation comes in your life, no matter what kind of temptation, tell the Holy Spirit, Lord, I'm not able to overcome this. I'm trying to fight, fight. Help me, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Because you're trying to do by your effort. You're not understood the covenant of grace. You're trying to work out by your, your effort, by your talent, by your intelligence, by your experience. You're not allowing grace efforts. Say, praise Jesus. All you have to say, Lord, I am not. I cannot. Please help me, Holy Spirit. Amen. Say, praise Jesus. Your hubby is not happy with you. Say, the Lord, my hubby is not happy. Help me to be making me so much that he will be in love with me 24-7. So it applies with the uh, wife also. Lord, my wife is not cooperating. Help me, Lord. She is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Help me, Lord. Immediately, all the thoughts will just diffuse us and make you one. Hallelujah. La, 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 la. Ooh. What is that song? Beautiful song is coming. Ooh. Yeah. Correct. the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Jesus. See, please understand. You see, there is a prompting in my heart to sing this song. I'm not getting the lyrics out. I know there's a tune there. I have so many songs to sing. But there is something inside me saying, this is the apt song. That is it. That is led by the Spirit. You understand? Suddenly you will have a feel that this is a song I should sing. Go by that. Early morning when you get up, you'll get a song. Sing the song. Amen. Hallelujah. Say praise Jesus. Jesus. Not by mind, not by power, but by the Spirit of our God. Yes, I will run the race till I see.
Church of God, those who are present here, those who are watching us online, I'm telling you, the season is God wants to teach you to profit. That is the word of God. That's a prophetical word. Isaiah 48 verse 17 is a prophetical word. He is here to teach you to profit. Remember that he does it even as you yield to understand his righteousness. Understand his Holy Spirit inside you. Understand the covenant of grace upon your life. It is not who you are. It is all about Jesus. Hallelujah. And this morning, this Jesus is waiting in your life. And if you are not accepted Jesus as a Lord and Savior, this day you can say, Lord Jesus, if you can repeat after me, Lord Jesus, today I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Turn away my life, Lord. 180 degree in Jesus name if you have made this prayer Jesus has come into your life and this morning he loves you you will see his direction this whole of coming two months in the name of Jesus I believe it's a season that God is teaching his children to profit amen if you're a businessman God causes you to excel if you're a man in profession God causes you to excel if you're a person in academic God causes you to excel whoever whatever field of life you are God is here to change your life upside down in Jesus name shall we all lift our hands right now in the name of Jesus father as we sign off this very month please Lord let your Holy Spirit be given all the access we give him all the access let him lead us Lord he said I will teach you and instruct you the way you should go I will guide you with my eye let the words come to fruition in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit this morning we allow you to reign over the church reign over the city of Lagos you are in the business of making Lagos the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus the whole nation of Nigeria we speak blessings upon the United Kingdom, the new Prime Minister, let him be empowered the gracious work he is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus we declare that the righteous way to be revealed to him in Jesus name that he may direct the path of the people of the Britishers there in the name of Jesus we renounce blessings upon his life this morning in Jesus name we bless our honorable president in the name of Jesus the president of this country all the governors we bless them in Jesus name the church signs off in the month of October and the Holy Spirit signs in in the month of November in the name of Jesus the gracious acts of God is revealed right now in Jesus name Amen. the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon Hallelujah. you and you are healed of all your sickness Amen. in Jesus name Amen. Amen. you have done marvelous things